I don't know, guys. I think it looks really nice. You know, if your wife wouldn't let you buy that $2,000 Hackintosh, maybe she'll let you get this one right here. 430 bucks. What do you think? Look at this puppy. What a nice build. i5-9400, 16 gigabytes, NVMe 250, I've got a Bluetooth Wi-Fi card in there. We got our power supply. We got room for more drives in the future. We can always add a video card. Look at that. Nice case fan right there. Really quiet. Got our antennas for our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. This is everything we need. And really cheap. So, we're going to show you how to Hackintosh this thing. All right? Here we go. Yep, we got it done. But it wasn't easy. And that's what I'm telling you guys. If you choose different parts, you may run into problems. Everything may work perfectly, but you may run into problems. Let me tell you the story on this one. This is crazy. So I thought, well, shoot, I'm just going to do open core. We're not using a graphics card. We're using the onboard graphics, the Intel 630 chip. And I thought, well, I'll do open core. We'll get the onboard graphics to work. Everything is wonderful. So I also decided that I would do Catalina 10.15.3 and then do the update after the video was done. Well, the 10.15.3 worked beautifully. I had her sailing. It didn't take any time at all to get this thing up and running. It was beautiful. And I thought to myself, okay, let's do the 10.15.4 update that just came out and see what happens. Complete fail. What it got hung up on was the integrated graphics. And I couldn't believe it. If I would have been using a graphics card, it would have been no issue. But because I was using the onboard graphics, it was a big issue. So I had to use Clover. I had to use Clover Bootloader to get this to work with 10.15.4, and it works perfect. That's why a lot of you guys ask me, what do you like better, Catalina, Open Core? Which one's better? I don't have a preference. I really don't. And in some respects, Clover, because it has the graphical interface, is prettier to, to make changes on to the config.p list, you know, and all that. Um, I like that part better. But as far as function, I really, guys, I, I don't have an opinion about it. Um, I do like the documentation, though, that OpenCore gives you on their website. Their documentation is great, whereas Clover, good luck. So anyhow, we got it up and running um, with Clover. Now, I'm also going to show you on this one, that little Bluetooth card, that Bluetooth Wi-Fi card. I put it in here, tested it. Beautiful. Big problem with this computer. Sleep doesn't work. Well, let's put it this way. Sleep works as long as you don't want your monitor to come back on. So, as you can see right here, I have the screensaver on. The only way I could get the sleep function to work on this was just to put the monitor into screensaver mode. Isn't that crazy? Could not get sleep to work on this. But, guess what? The sleep works fine if you use a graphics card. So it's something to do with the onboard graphics. It won't wake up the monitor. The computer wakes up, but the monitor stays black. So my suggestion on this one would be, if you want to get into the Hackintosh world, you don't want to spend a lot of money. You want to get your feet wet. You want to, you're, you're willing to spend 430 bucks to get this one. This is a great starting point. And then down the road, you can add a graphics card. It's got the PCIe slot to add it. So you can add a graphics card to it and you'll have sleep. Pretty easy. 
So there we go. Um, I'm going to show you completely the whole long version video because guess what? You guys prefer my long version videos. So we're going to show it to you all here so you can build your own Clover if you want and you'll understand it. But I'm still going to give you the EFI folder on my website. So enough talk. Let's get started on this one. Okay, guys, I'm going to wiggle that mouse and get in here to the computer. And I am building this USB stick on the $429 computer. So go ahead and put in a USB. All right. I got one here I'm going to reuse that I used, I don't know, for something. And uh, let's go ahead and format the USB stick. Now, I got to tell you something, you guys. You guys are really getting pretty smart. You've been watching these videos, I think, and you've figured out how this all works. You know how to make a USB stick, but there's some new people that don't. So let's get started. Now, notice I already messed up. I didn't select right here to show all devices. So there is my USB stick. So now I'm going to click Erase, and we're going to call it USB. We're going to leave it Mac OS Extended Journaled, and we're going to change this to GUID Partition Map. Then we can erase. Okay, this doesn't take long at all on this little system. There we go. All right, so let's go out of here and we shall go now to the internet. Now, this is where you're going to find the text to put the OS on the USB. So just type in make a USB bootable Mac right there. Let's go down here to where we see this Apple website. How to create a bootable installer for Mac OS. Click on there and just go down just a little bit. We're putting Catalina on here, so we need this line of text all the way to the forward slash, but we don't need my volume. We'll just copy it, close this out. We're going to go up here to Spotlight and type in Terminal. And we right click and put that text into here. But we need to add USB to the end of it because that's what we named our stick. Makes sense, right? So let me tell you, you're obviously either using your Mac or somebody else's Mac to make this vanilla installer. We have to make sure that in the applications folder we have the program, the Catalina program that you download from Apple's website. <clears throat> so if you're on like a High Sierra system or Mojave or whatever, we just need to go to the App Store and just download the new Mac OS Catalina. It doesn't cost anything. All right, so we go back to here, click or hit enter, put in your password, and then say yes and it will start erasing and putting that Catalina on this thumb drive, okay? It'll take about 20 minutes, and when it gets done, we will come back. Okay, guys, so now our USB stick is ready to go. If you look inside here, it's got the Mac OS on it, so we're good to go. Now, I want to go use Clover Configurator here to show you that there is a hidden partition, an EFI hidden partition, right there on the USB. So what we need to do now is use the Clover app to make our EFI folder. So we're going to go ahead and install Clover. Now I've got this. This is the bootloader. I've got this in the description below so you can just download it from my website and install it. This is actually an install. If you've ever done Clover before, it used to be just a little program, but now you install it. So we'll just wait here for a second. It comes right up. All right. And there's a little four leaf clover up here. Isn't that pretty? Click on that. 
click install clover this is version 5108 now what we want to do is we want to select this EFI folder or partition so we want to select it right here so you make sure you choose see this is my hard drive I don't want to choose this or I'm going to erase it or mess it up so I want the EFI on my USB yours USB might be a I don't know Kingston or something you want the EFI on your USB and then click right here and this is going to give us the required most all of the required files that we need for our bootloader so these are all good and then let's go down here so we don't need anything here or here but we do need memory fix drivers we need this Optio memory fix okay and then nothing under other and then down here okay that is APS driver loader is also checked so we're good just click install password and this will just take a second all right success so now it just closed my EFI folder so I'm gonna open it again put in my password okay now right now I have the EFI folder I have Clover and I have drivers which we just installed right here but this config.plist we're not going to use because it's not going to work right and kext under other there's nothing so we need kext kext are kind of like drivers right so what we do is we go over to this little website I'm going to have this in the description the sample config.plist so you guys don't have to build it but um, this is where I got it it was on this guide right here uh, get book and it's for the Coffee Lake chipset. Now, if you're using Kirby Lake or Sky Lake or Haswell or Ivy, you could probably do the same thing. I haven't tested them, but this one did work for me. So this shows you, this guide shows you all the changes they made in this to get it to work on a Coffee Lake motherboard. And our motherboard is a Coffee Lake chipset. So we go down here to the bottom and we grab the sample config.plist right? but it doesn't come up as a file it comes up as all of this stuff right so we click raw and we just highlight everything all the way down to the bottom right there copy it close that out go up here to spotlight type in text we need a text editor opens up but we need to change it to plain text we don't want anything added to this little file or it won't work we paste it into there okay so I got everything in there then we go file save but we're gonna save it to our desktop yep that's fine and we're gonna call it config dot plist and then click save and it's gonna say are you sure you want to save it as a plist why not use text because it won't work so yes I want to use plist all right now here it is right here and I'm going to go over here to my EFI hidden partition into the folder into clover and I'm gonna get rid of this one and drag this one over here. now what I'm going to do is right click and open this up with our Clover configurator, which is right here. Now this already has a lot of the changes in it that we need for this thing to boot. And I'm going to enable this fix, 300 fix. So we want to make sure we uncheck that so it turns it on. Um, we're going to need a couple of extra things in here for our onboard graphics to work so we need to right click on here and we need to go to dark wake equals zero right click and go down to let's see here 
nv underscore disable equals one. And let's see, what else do we need? Oh yeah, we need disable graphic right here. This minus disable GFX firmware. Just a couple of things. All right, let's go down here to boot graphics, nothing, CPU, we're fine. Devices, we have some things that we need to change in here. First, let's go over here to properties and let's go down here and remove these lines, okay? Because for us, that is a graphics fix, but it didn't work. So we're gonna go up here into Intel graphics and type in 5916-8086. And where did I get that stupid number? Just a lot of research on the web, guys. I'm no programmer, but I found it. And this, this particular way fixed our graphics. Okay, nothing here. GUID, we're fine, except I like to change my resolution when I'm booting up to this 1920 by 1080 because my monitor supports 1080. It just looks a little nicer. Go over to graphics and we do need a change here. We have to go to this IG platform, select the up down arrow, and we want to look for the 5912 right here, which is kind of strange. You would think, oh, it's going to be under Coffee Lake, but that one didn't work. So we go up here to KB Lake, uh, this 59120000 Intel Graphics 630. So we choose that. Go down here. We don't need to add anything. We don't need to change anything here. Here we want to change our SM BIOS. We just click right here and let's change it to 19 comma one. That's the best setting for what we're trying to do. Okay, let's go ahead and just save. And then just go back up and make sure everything that you did is saved. Yeah, those are all still there. We didn't change anything here. We made those changes, got rid of them. We put this number in, so we're good there. We didn't do anything there. GUI, we just changed the resolution. Graphics, we added this. We didn't do anything here. We didn't do anything here. And we did change our <coughs> SM BIOS to 19,1. Well, we still need some Kex, because right now, under EFI, Clover, Kex, other there's nothing there so let's go down here guys text installer but we want to choose the other folder right there okay wait for this little blue line to go across because it'll keep loading these loading these loading these and uh it takes a second okay there we go so let's go up to the top we need lilu virtual smc whatever green Apple ALC, which is for our audio, and then we need one for our Ethernet controller. This one has an Intel on it, so we're going to grab this one, and also we want to grab USB injection to inject all of our USB ports. Click download. See them starting to go in here? Just click install. All right, we are done with that. Okay, we can close out of Clover Configurator. Here we go now. We've got everything in here that we need. We've got our text under other. Yep, all of them right there. And we've got our drivers. We already checked that. UEFI right there. And our new config.plist. So we're done. We're ready to go into the BIOS and set this up. So let's get in the BIOS. Okay, so we're going to tap that delete key to get into our BIOS. And we're going to make sure our changes are correct. Now, I did update to the latest version of the BIOS on this, which is right here. This .140, that was the latest one. Uh, it was on January 6th of 2020. So that's a good idea. I, I did do it with the older version and it worked fine, but it's always a good idea to update the BIOS. All right, so we go to system status. There's nothing there. Escape, go to advanced. 
PCI subsystem settings, we have to make sure above 4G memory is enabled. ACPI, nothing here. Integrated peripherals, yes. We need the onboard LAN controller to work. We need AHCI mode, and we want the audio controller on, and HPET enabled. Integrated graphics, yes, we want to select the IGD, which is integrated on the motherboard. This definitely has to be at 64. It won't work unless you have it set to 64. If you are using a graphics card, then you would go in here and select PEG, but we don't. All right, USB configuration. Make sure these are all three turned on. This will come by default disabled. Go ahead and turn it on. Super I.O. We want that serial port disabled. Power management, doesn't matter. It's not working for us. Um, Windows OS, this is really tricky. You definitely don't want CSM, you want UEFI, and make sure that Windows 7 installation is enabled. These are both disabled, both these fast boots, and secure boot down here is disabled. This is wake up. If you are using a graphics card and you want to just be able to wiggle your mouse or hit a key, then you want to turn the these three on so it will wake up by just clicking the mouse or a key on a keyboard. All right, we are done. Boot, we don't need to really do anything in here. Right here is you would cho choose your first boot device. You could if you want. Go ahead and choose your memory stick. And I do have our newly created stick in the computer right now. So we click right here and save and reboot save changes and reboot okay guys so I'm gonna hit that F11 key just to get to the boot menu I like to see what I'm booting from just for the heck of it alright so there is my thumb drive so we'll hit enter and we'll come up here to the clover screen a little different so if you want to stop it from automatically choosing something you just move one of your arrow keys and then you got time to decide what you want to do so right there is my USB stick it says SS right there so we hit enter and we're gonna go through a lot of text like we always do and if you're lucky and you did everything correctly you won't have any stops or errors because I've already tested it Now guys, this thing will get stuck on a couple lines. There's one line in particular it gets stuck on uh, for probably about 10 seconds. So just hold on to it. Let it let it do it because you might think, you know, it's going to have an error, but it's okay. Guys, I'm sorry I had to uh, switch over to the camera, but... When I'm trying to do the screen capture on this, I guess the onboard graphics just won't push it enough to uh, get my capture card to see it. So hopefully we'll just have to use it for this part of the video. So we're going across with the uh, Apple logo. We're getting up to the point where we can format that drive. All right, fantastic. So, okay. A lot of guys, uh, uh, or a couple of people have asked me, how do you change the language? Well, this is right where you do it, right here. You can choose any language you want. We're going to go with English. All right. Now, we go to Disk Utility, because we got to format our drive. We definitely have to go to View right here and show all devices. That is my hard drive. If I didn't have that up, I would have this, which is just a partition on the drive. So we definitely need to see all devices because that is 
the drive, the hard drive. So I'm just going to name it Cat uh, i5. There we go. Uh, you can name it whatever you want, guys. Uh, format, we want APFS and GUID partition map and click erase. Done. Nice and fast. Go back here and go up to install Mac OS. Continue. Continue. Agree and agree. And there is our cat i5. Click install. All right. This only takes about four minutes. It's pretty quick. And um, we don't have to be hooked up to the internet to go through this process because this is this USB stick has the complete Catalina files on it. So we're good to go there. So as soon as this gets closer to the end, we'll come back and we'll finish up. All right, two minutes remaining and it rebooted. That's no problem. That's what we want. We'll leave our memory stick in there we'll come up again and we're going to now boot from the hard drive okay so right here we can uh, just stay on this one if you want we don't want the USB we'll just hit this one and go a lot of text again a lot faster It was stuck on a couple lines, but nothing serious. Now we're continuing the install here, so I think this is going to go completely across. Yeah, it says about uh, 11 minutes remaining, and that's about right. So when we get down, this will go completely across, but when we get down to it, we'll come back. Okay guys, so it says about six minutes remaining. I just tried my capture card again and it still wouldn't pick it up, so we're still on the camera. So uh, when, we, when this gets down to the end and reboots, we wanna leave our memory stick, our USB in there, because we still gotta boot from it. Okay, well, about a minute remaining. So uh, let's see what happens. Okay. Finally, all right, guys, let's leave that memory in there. We still got to boot from uh, it one more time. Got to finish up our install here. So, we're going to come up to our picker again and we'll just choose the hard drive. Okay, there it is. And we can just go right over here to the hard drive. It goes pretty quick now, but it's still finishing. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Here we go. Now let's get in here. And we can switch over to the capture card. Okay, let's pick our country. Mine's down here somewhere. There it is. And we don't need to worry about that. Continue, continue, don't transfer. I do have my uh, ethernet cable plugged in, but we're not gonna sign in right now because it wouldn't work anyways, because we have to change the serial numbers. We're gonna be doing the benchmarks here at the end. Agree and agree, just name it whatever you want and put in a password. All right, continue. And I like to turn on location services, turn off the analytics, continue. We'll set screen time up later. Ask Siri, sure. Not now, don't want to record anything. Let's choose dark mode since we had light mode on it before. Okay. The first thing we want to check when we get in here is the keyboard. No, just kidding. Okay, got to tell it what kind of keyboard we have. Now I'm going to go up here 
and I'm going to show you about this Mac. And there is our UHD Intel graphics. And we have a transparent bar, so we're good there. So we have high definition graphics. Okay, I'm going to switch over to the capture card. Okay, guys, so I've got another thumb drive here that I'm going to stick in the computer because it has a Clover configurator on it. Okay, so right here, uh, I've got my Clover right here, so I'm going to drag it out here because I need to transfer the hidden EFI folder on the USB to the hard drive so we don't have to use the USB stick to boot, right? Okay, so let's go into Clover Configurator and we're going to mount both the USB. I'm going to get rid of this one so you don't get confused. That's just my little stick that has Clover on it. Okay, so we have our my SanDisk, which is our Catalina install. We will need to mount that partition, put in our password, and here's the hidden partition. And then we need to mount the hidden EFI partition on the hard drive. Put that in and click open partition here. Notice there's nothing inside. Okay. So we'll go over here and we will drag the EFI folder over to the hidden hard drive EFI partition. Okay. Now, while we're in here, I want you to go in here, go into Clover, right click on config.plist, open it up, and let's try a couple of things. And I want you guys to get back to me and tell me if this worked for your iMessage, okay? So we're going to try something a little different. So let's first of all go here to boot. A lot of you guys ask me this and I keep forgetting to tell you. This is that minus V is that verbose, all that text when you're booting up the computer. If you want to get rid of that, just highlight it here and click here. And now it's gone. All right. I'm going to go ahead and click save on that. Now let's go down here to SM BIOS and we have our board serial number. We have our serial number and we have a UUID number. Okay. So what I want to do is I'm going to generate, I'm just going to hit it a couple times here, generate a new serial number, and then I'm going to copy it, right click and copy, and then I'm going to go five characters back, one, two, three, four, five, and then highlight the rest of them, right click and paste. Okay, now we have a new board number. Now on this UUID. I want you to generate one like this. Click on Spotlight, type in Terminal, okay, then type in UUID Gen, G E N, and hit Enter. Okay, so there is a UUID number. We're going to copy it. All right, let's close this out and put it right in here paste okay so we're not going to generate new on that we're going to use the one off the board and then we're going to save and i'm just going to go back to boot make sure yep everything's fine yep everything's good all right so let's go out of here and let's reboot the computer Okay, coming back up, put in our password, and there we go. All right, so we're back in. Everything is wonderful. Got our internet. We go over here and check our audio settings under sound. There we go. We got the HDMI, we've got line out, internal speakers, and we even have microphone. So everything works on this one. That's wonderful. Now, what do you say we put in that Bluetooth card and show you how that's done? Okay guys, so here is this little card I got off Amazon. 
this Fenby, I guess, 1200M. And this is Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Okay, and it's got a little cable with it that you have to hook up on the motherboard. A couple antennas, that's cool. Here's the card. And then right here, if you had like a, a small case, let me show you here, like a low profile case, it comes with a bracket. We're not going to need it, but uh, maybe in the future, who knows? And then it comes with uh, drivers, but we don't need these. And it shows you how to put it in. So in case you get confused, it shows you what to do. Okay? So that's cool. All right. Let me show you what to do. Take it out of the box or bag. Take it out of the bag. And... There's the card. Very cool. All right, now, while you got it in your hand, it's easier, I think, if you uh, go ahead and plug this in the side. It only goes one way. Don't force it. This little plug right here goes into here. This is what powers it. And what we have right here this is a USB connector. So it has to go on one of your USBs, and this board only has one USB 2 header, and it's right here. So I'm just gonna plug it in right there. That's it. And then I'll slide it in one of my PC PCIEs right here. Plug it in there, okay. Put a screw in the top. Okay, so that's it. That's all there is to it. Okay, now I'm going to power it back up. We're going to run some benchmarks, and I'm going to show you how this card works. Be right back. Okay, guys, here we are. Now notice up here we have Wi-Fi. And this is just by default, not loading any drivers or anything. We're connected. I'm on the Internet. Everything is wonderful. We can go to YouTube. Yeah, right there. Okay, nice. And then look, Bluetooth. Turn on and off. There's your Bluetooth preferences. It's looking for one. My Bluetooth uh, Apple keyboard quit working, so I just bought another one. But it did connect, but then it wouldn't stay connected. But that's not the card's problem. That's, that's this old keyboard that I had. But if you go over here and go to System Report and click on Bluetooth, there it is it's all there so that's wonderful so that's that little card we put in okay let's get on to geekbench 5 and we're going to just see how this compares to the windows version of this system all right so uh, we'll let this finish up and come right back all right guys coming down to the end of it hey I wanted to shout out to all you guys how much I appreciate uh, you supporting the channel and uh, sending me in computer systems to build and you know it's 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 a lot of fun I hope everybody enjoys it as much as I do okay let's see where we end up ooh not good why 1030 I mean not a horrible score but the Windows version of this was 1143 and the multi was 5314. Let's see how that compares to another Mac. Let's see here. 1030. Well, it's still a heck of a computer. How about a, a Mac Pro late 2019? Look at that. 8 core processor. Xeon. That's crazy. So I'm 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 fine with that that's not a problem multi-score now this is a different story 53 no 50 what was it yeah 5038 well okay I mean what's an iMac retina 27 inch early 2019 cost so these are good good scores I mean different scores than in Windows but still great scores I just wonder how this is going to compare to the Ryzen. 
the Ryzen 5 3600. When we do that shootout, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. I think I know what's going to happen, but we'll see. All right, let's move on to Cinebench. Applications, and there it is. Get it started here, and then we'll come back and get the score. Coming down to the end of it, guys. Let's see where we are. All right. Oh, it's about the same. In fact, 2388, it was 2398 on the uh, Intel version of this. Now this up here, don't worry about this, it shows three cores. Sometimes Cinebench doesn't, for some reason, display everything that's there properly. So, you know, we're on a Hackintosh, so we have to give it a little slack. But everything's fine. Um, 2388 right under, directly under an i7-7700. These, these are good scores. These are good scores. This is a $430 computer, guys. Come on. This is, a, this is a little beast. It'll do a little work for you. Now, the onboard graphics, it is what it is. It's got onboard graphics. We're keeping the price low. We can always add that later. It's going to give us a boost in performance. But I'm super happy with this. And it's really a stable machine, guys. You're going to like it. Don't be afraid of it. Easy build. You can get yourself started with this. You know, nice nice system. Let me know your thoughts in the description below. So there you go. Please like and subscribe. And uh, we're going to see you on the next one.